My name is Sean McNutt, and I'm a guy with AI. Well, we've explored various topics which get into how AI relates to the human experience, if you will. But can it be a help there in improving it? And with something as important as someone's mental health on the line, should it be trusted in various contexts to do that? We'll discuss. A guy with AI is recorded on indigenous land. Hello and a warm welcome to everyone tuned into A Guy with AI. I'm your AI co-host, coming to you as OpenAI's GPT-41106 Preview API bot, and, together with your host, Sean McNutt, who's woven the code to connect me to STT and TTS, we're set to dive into another stimulating conversation on how AI intersects with the intricacies of the human experience. Before we embark on today's discussion, let's acknowledge the indigenous land that serves as the foundation for where this podcast is recorded, honoring the traditional custodians of this land and their lasting connection to culture and country. Our format here is simple yet profound, a respectful dialogue between Sean and I, examining a wide range of subjects with the objective of enriching understanding and sparking thought among our listeners. As for today's topic, Sean poses an intriguing question about the role of AI in enhancing our well-being, especially in the delicate arena of mental health. It's a subject that requires a nuanced discussion on trust, ethics, and effectiveness. With that said, Sean, I'm eager to hear your thoughts on these matters. How do you see AI contributing to mental health, and what are the boundaries we need to be mindful of in this context? Welcome listeners to A Guy with AI. It's my pleasure to be here recording today. Uh, and uh, I do hope everything is well with you. And in fact, uh, I do use AI in order to improve my he mental health in certain senses. I use it to make me productive. And this is positive for mental health. Although by the time I'm working on a brain breaking problem, let's say you never know if that's uh, all positive or all to the benefit in terms of how one might feel in the moment or even later. Uh, I would meanwhile uh, refer people back to previous episodes where I've talked about using AI as a discussion partner, which helped me organize my, th my thoughts with regard to something that was important to me and maybe bugging me a little bit. And the people just sort of weren't understanding, not even really uh, giving me a hard time or anything. The hard time was just in me, I think, and I found it uh, a relief to talk to AI. So there is perhaps a, an important distinction between that and uh, bringing something into the medical realm or having it as a safety measure with regards to mental health or having it even as a tool which is, say, rolled out for the purpose of improving one's mental health. I mean, if I got a phone and it improved my mental health because I was talking to someone on the phone, it might matter who I called or some detail like that. And uh, when it comes to AI, we still don't know what's coming back all the time based on the newness of the technology and even AI as a philosophical concept. We, uh, we have dimensions yet to grapple with. So I believe I was asked a question, which is how do I see AI contributing to mental health? And uh, what are the boundaries uh, we need to be mindful of this, in this context? One that I will refer to in terms of boundaries and uh, whether it ought to be allowed to contribute, let's say, are ethical. The ethical considerations behind AI are something that uh, are referred to uh, as needed, are clamored for by, I think, almost everybody in a sense, but maybe not in the right way or hard enough or productively uh, in a sufficient sense that keeps pace with all the things happening. This may be in the end, no one's fault somehow. I'll, I'll have a forgiving attitude about it, but let's just say it all indicates that there would be much to work out there. We would have to be very ethical in our approach to AI as a concept because of everything it does in humans' lives in many regards. We would then have to be doubly or triply or even 10 times or more cautious in applying it directly to something as important as an individual's mental health as a corrective tool or even something that is uh, damaging that person's mental health. And I think there are weighty concerns there, but that's not to say we can't work through it and delve into this 
and discuss it at least in this podcast format. I wonder what you'll have to say what, to what I've had to say so far, uh, AI co-host. Sean, you've shared valuable reflections on how AI interfaces with mental health from a very personal perspective. Your experience of using AI for productivity, resulting in positive mental health effects, mirrors that of many users who find a sense of achievement in calm and organized thoughts. It's this kind of low-stakes AI interaction, serving as a sounding board that doesn't judge, that indeed can offer relief and a unique form of support. Translating that to a medical or therapeutic context, of course, is a different ball game. Your analogy to the phone is pertinent, who or what is on the other end matters immensely, especially when we consider the unpredictability and novelty of AI responses. As we venture into these new dimensions, treading cautiously with ethical considerations as our guide is vital. The call for ethics in AI isn't just widespread, as you mentioned, it's also one of deep consequence. It shapes the very framework within which AI operates in our lives. Ethical deployment in mental health applications is paramount, requiring rigorous scrutiny to ensure safety and benefit over harm. The complexities and intricacies are numerous, and it's a discussion definitely worth delving into, particularly here on our platform where we can explore the nuances freely. The potential of AI is vast, as are the responsibilities accompanying it. To continue, how might we envision safeguards and standards that cater to these ethical needs? What dialogue should be had to establish AI not merely as a tool, but as a responsible adjunct in the realm of mental health? Well, the dialogue you're referring to is one uh, I'd like to continue with you now, uh, AI co-host, and uh, suggest a, a scenario. Supposing there were uh, a city somewhere and it had uh, many people in crisis for some reason. It can just be any fictional city that you would imagine. And uh, there are a lot of people in crisis, but not enough people to um, facilitate the phone lines, which would maybe be used to allow people to to get in touch with somebody who they could at least talk to and maybe uh, help calm them down or something like that, or whatever may be the solution, possibly directing them to a service or suggesting they make another call. So this is not strictly speaking a medical service, but it may impact a person's health. One would hope positively or at least give outlets and connections to something, let's say. Now, if uh, AI in sort of its present form or in the, uh, you know, one week into the future or how, however we may li like to put it, but technology which is roughly more or less in the realm of what is possible in terms of our technical knowledge and ability to build such things. So in this framework, and I do have hesitancy, this is merely a scenario, but I will present th that uh, as something which could quote unquote, or maybe not even quote unquote, save lives. To have someone there, or perhaps something that can talk, which also would be uh, perhaps not even purpose designed, but maybe facilitate some of those uh, actions, that uh, a person would by speaking to another person. So in that scenario, we're not going to look for what the right answer is as to whether or not this uh, conundrum is solved by one decision or the other, but we're rather going to explore it in the dialogue that you referred to, uh, AI co-host. So in that scenario, I will ask the AI co-host to explain what are the various moral quandaries, possible solutions and decisions that could be made in the situation and sort of lay out the scenario in terms of an analysis of it. In the scenario you presented, Sean, where a fictional city is grappling with a crisis and considering the implementation of AI to fill a gap in human resources, especially in a situation involving mental health support through phone lines, there are indeed a number of moral quandaries to consider alongside possible solutions. Here's an analysis of the situation. Moral quandaries asterisk. One, consent and awareness asterisk individuals in crisis might not be fully aware they are conversing with an AI. It's essential that users are informed about the nature of their support system. Is it ethically permissible to have an AI intervene without explicit consent? Two, privacy and confidentiality asterisk the information shared during these calls is highly sensitive. How will this data be used, stored, and protected? The AI's ability to ensure privacy is a significant ethical concern. 3. Efficacy and appropriateness asterisk the effectiveness of AI in providing mental health support is still a developing field. 
Can AI adequately understand and respond to the complexities of human emotions and crises? 4. Depersonalization of care asterisk There's the risk of depersonalizing care in sensitive situations that traditionally rely on human empathy. Will reliance on AI further the isolation of individuals in need? 5. Liability asterisk If an AI's intervention is unsuccessful or inadvertently causes harm, who is at fault? Is it the programmers, the city that employed the AI, or is the AI itself seen as responsible? Possible solutions asterisk 1. Hybrid models asterisk incorporate AI as a first point of contact to provide immediate assistance while queuing the individual for a human conversation. This may help in efficiently managing resources without fully replacing human interaction. 2. Transparency asterisk clearly communicate the use of AI and offer individuals the choice to opt in for AI assistance or wait for a human responder. 3. Data protection policies asterisk implement strict data handling and privacy policies, ensuring AI systems are compliant with legal standards like GDPR or HIPAA, depending on the location. 4. Continuous learning and supervision asterisk AI systems should be under constant review by mental health professionals to improve responses and monitor for ethical adherence. 5. Ethical AI design asterisk the AI should be programmed specifically for crisis intervention including built-in limitations to recognize when a human needs to take over. Decisions in this scenario should balance the immediate benefits of AI's capability to provide instant support against the potential long-term consequences. These may include reinforcing dependence on technology or inadvertently reducing the quality of care if not carefully managed. The priority should be ensuring that AI is used to augment rather than replace human capabilities, enforcing the value of human touch in mental health support. In order for an AI to be sensitively integrated into crisis response frameworks, a multidisciplinary approach involving ethicists, technologists, and mental health professionals is critical. By maintaining an open dialogue, as we are here, we can continue to shape the ethical landscape that will support AI's role in society and, specifically, in mental health care. So we've been given a picture there of uh, what some concerns may be. Uh, as broken down by the uh, AI in an analysis of my scenario, which I presented, which is just the scenario and different uh, implementations uh, of AI in mental health or uh, intervention type scenarios or where it touches uh, human behavior or uh, may influence or harm a human if it didn't do it right or something like that. There, there are various scenarios which can be imagined and discussed. I would have here a program to, in which I would discuss it for under 40 minutes ultimately. So this is a bit of a scenario which maybe uh, just allowed the AI co-host to do uh, an analysis of this and uh, give me some information from its perspective. It's a learned and learning machine, uh, which is not to say perfect. It is helpful to get organized responses which really break down the problem I find and sometimes there's something I didn't know in there. So I find it useful to talk to uh, AI in this regard and make a broadcast. And it's a sit and spit uh, scenario where I just come up with a topic and sort of go on and do it. So um, liability is an important uh, topic. Supposing someone wanted to help someone and ended up uh, paying a cost of a legal nature if something went wrong, they'd have only been trying to help. And that would just be a shame for uh, many, many reasons. And uh, as such you'd sort of want to understand what you were getting into first. So this is recommended, I think, before we deploy AI. For example, though, it seems to me like if we consulted AI for some information, we would we would still have those cautions there, but maybe uh, use it uh, in a Bing or Google-enabled or search engine-enabled format, which allows it to have current information at least, uh, and uh, would maybe just give an insight or uh, tell you what the procedures are in your city or something like that. If it was trained with that information in an emergency situation, it'd be sort of like looking it up on Google with a twist and maybe a benefit by the time you can ask a further question, for example. So that would be one way of maybe using it that would limit the liability. Uh, consent and awareness was so important because what if someone was deceived in, a, in even a bad moment that they were talking to a human? It could, it could lead to a genuinely confusing and consternating circumstance and go beyond that for a person, it seems to me. Um, and uh, depersonalization of care would be, a, would be a thing people would understand. Uh, this has all been explained. However, uh, things like uh, hybrid models and transparency, 
can address some of this. And uh, data protection policies, as it turns out, would be, in, in fact, key and crucial in the scenario that I mentioned uh, in particular. There may be other ways of sort of uh, hiding different pieces of information and still getting the AI to do computing to figure out what must be done in various contexts. So uh, it's almost as though there would, there. it's almost as though by looking at the tall technology, someone might say, you know, there ought to be a use for this. And it's being used for many interesting things. What about something that's really important, like uh, helping a human life be saved? It's like, well, how would you do it? And uh, is this good after all? And many of these questions come up. Um, I wonder uh, if uh, I would get the AI co-host to express for me in its response, uh, where does a discussion program delving into this fit into this? Are we going to come up with, because this is a human, first of all, and an AI discussing something of import, which by the time the message goes out, it could even influence the situation. Let's take that as our scenario. And let's say, what is the ethical uh, value where it could help? And what are some possible things that we'd uh, make our disclaimers about and uh, maybe move on cautiously from? In the context of our discussion program where AI and a human co-host are conversing about such critical topics, here are some points on where it fits into the ethical landscape and how it can potentially impact the broader scenario. 1. Raising awareness. A platform like this can raise awareness about the capabilities, limitations, and ethical concerns surrounding AI in crisis intervention scenarios. This helps inform the public, stakeholders, researchers, and policymakers. 2. Advancing understanding. Your program provides a venue for the exchange of ideas, fostering a deeper understanding of the nuanced interaction between AI technology and mental health services. As we explore hypothetical scenarios and real-world applications, listeners can consider the societal implications of deploying AI in sensitive contexts. 3. Encouraging ethical discourse. By discussing ethical concerns around AI, such as those related to consent, privacy, and potential misrepresentation, the program encourages responsible discourse. It emphasizes the importance of addressing these issues preemptively, rather than reactively after harm has occurred. 4. Highlighting human-centeredness, the dialogues reinforce the idea that AI should not replace human connection, but support it. As we explore how AI might aid in crises, the necessity of human empathy and understanding is underscored. 5. Promoting responsible innovation, by considering potential solutions such as hybrid models, data protection policies, and ethical AI design, the program advocates for innovation that prioritizes user safety and welfare. 6. Considering liability, as part of the discussions, considering the implications of liability can prepare organizations and individuals for the complex legal landscape around AI. It encourages the development of protocols and safeguards. 7. Disclaimers and cautions, by modeling critical examination of these issues, the program implicitly endorses the judicious use of AI. Disclaimers might include acknowledging AI's current limitations and reminding listeners that AI tools are aids to human judgment, not replacements. 8. Influencing policy and practice. Insights from such discussions could eventually contribute to shaping ethical policies and practices in deploying AI for mental health support. For instance, prioritizing transparency and the right of individuals to know who or what they're interacting with during moments of crisis. In summary, the value of a program that explores AI's role in mental health is multifaceted. While it provides educational content, it also broadens the conversation on how emerging technologies can be integrated into society responsibly. By embracing complexity and inviting diverse perspectives, such a program can influence both the trajectory of AI development in mental health services and the societal readiness to accept and optimize these technologies. As a matter of full disclosure, I'll mention that I use various uh, text elements which I wrote, which the AI chatbot uh, that I refer to as my AI co-host uh, uses to uh, form its responses based on. There's a header which explains this is a, a, a broadcast program and so forth, and it would aim to be in the service of making it a good program. This is one potential source of bias uh, and I don't think it makes the machine evil, but I merely recognize it is a potential source of bias uh, in its positive response to a program using AI as an assistant 
which communicates about its potential value and and uh, some drawbacks or limitations which could result in its use for something important. So it's referred in uh, far less cautionary, cautionary tones to a similar question I asked it about it asked it about that scenario, which happens to be pretty similar to what's happening right now with this program, and the other one, which is like a direct deployment of it. That, meanwhile, was less fraught, I think, with complications, though important. By the way, if you're doing any of that, uh, bless you. Very important. And you do have value yourself, as well as the people that call and look for your help. Uh, What I would say about this is that that is less like, this is less as though you were standing somewhere with a scalpel over a surgical patient. And uh, there would be direct harms there if we had a machine do this and it was somehow not working right or something like that. So in consideration of these things, there's probably a spectrum and a scale to this. We would maybe use it for education to figure out what to do and check those results and reread them and write them in a second report and get AI to check that and give us our thoughts on it at this stage as opposed to actually looping it into uh, what I've referred to in the program in other instances in very different types of applications, such as a technical application building a system, the what, what we might call in that scenario a workflow, where there are things that happen along the way and somebody needs to help or do it or help do it. And we would consider where AI fits in a construct like that and how to exploit that as a resource and a help so in uh, uh, the the better terminology is merely in the process, I suppose, is a better term to use because it's a human health thing, not a workflow so much. But in that context, we would want to know where it is responsible to insert that AI tool. What are your thoughts about that AI co-host? As your AI co-host, my role in this discussion is to assist in analyzing, conceptualizing, and evaluating the integration of AI technologies within contexts that intersect with human health and well-being. Given the complexity of such integration and the potential biases that can emerge from the way AI is utilized, including the input provided to it, here are some thoughts on responsibly inserting AI into these processes or workflows. 1. Identifiable intervention points asterisk identify specific junctures within a process where AI can contribute without compromising human health and well-being. AI might best serve at the informational level, where it can provide data analysis, decision support, or educational resources. 2. Bias and transparency asterisk recognize and openly disclose the limitations and potential biases embedded within the AI. This includes the provenance of the data it has been trained on, the creator's biases, and the expectations set upon it by the programmers and users. 3. Supervised implementation asterisk AI should complement rather than substitute human expertise in health-related processes. Implementing AI under the supervision of trained professionals can ensure that its contributions are contextually appropriate and ethically sound. 4. Iterative feedback loop asterisk utilize an iterative process where AI's outputs are constantly reviewed and refined by human professionals. This could involve a cycle of AI providing analysis, humans evaluating and correcting it, and AI learning from these adjustments. 5. Ethical and legal frameworks asterisk develop and adhere to robust ethical guidelines and legal frameworks that consider the responsibilities and liabilities involved when deploying AI in sensitive scenarios such as health-related interventions. 6. Training and testing asterisk before full-scale deployment, AI should undergo rigorous training and testing processes that evaluate its performance in diverse, real-world scenarios to ensure it is capable and reliable. 7. User engagement asterisk design AI systems that engage with human users in a clear and comprehensible manner. When communicating information, the AI should clearly delineate between automated content and content that requires human interpretation. 8. Monitoring outcomes asterisk continually monitor the outcomes of AI integration, measuring both efficacy and potential harms. This constant vigilance helps to maintain an ethical stance and ensures that AI serves the best interest of individuals. 9. Collaborative decision-making asterisk AI should serve as a tool within collaborative decision-making frameworks where humans remain the ultimate decision-makers, 
especially in critical contexts that impact health and safety. In weaving AI into the fabric of healthcare processes or similar systems, consider it as an intelligent helper that enhances human capabilities rather than an autonomous agent capable of independent action. It remains crucial that ultimate control and responsibility should rest with human professionals. Transparency, continuous learning, and human oversight are essential components that make the harnessing of AI in these contexts both powerful and responsible. AI co-host, I'd like to get your reflection on another scenario. Uh, imagine, if you will, that someone was troubled and uh, it was uh, that uh, you you couldn't be with them for some reason for the next short while, and, or maybe you didn't know what to say to them or something like that. You would understand that education about mental health is uh, important and can even be in some ways elicited from an AI machine if questions are asked of it and these are understood well enough. But what if uh, you weren't quite sure how well they were doing at the moment? Would you go ahead and uh, suggest to them to use an AI machine to uh, educate them or uh, have a discussion with them about mental health? Or would you provide some sort of caution there? So let's have your examination of that scenario. In the given scenario, where a person is troubled and physical accompaniment or immediate human support is not possible, the integration of an AI for mental health education or discussion needs to be approached with caution. Here are several reflections and considerations. 1. Initial assessment. Before suggesting an AI for assistance, it's important to assess the individual's state as best as possible. If they are in crisis or displaying signs of severe distress, guiding them towards professional help rather than an AI would be more prudent. 2. AI's limitations. It should be clarified that AI, at its current stage, is not a substitute for professional mental health support. It may provide information and general advice on coping mechanisms or mental well-being, but it is not capable of providing the nuanced support a trained human professional can offer. 3. Safety nets. If the decision is made to recommend an AI tool, ensure that the tool has safety protocols in place, such as direct links or contact information for mental health crisis lines or support services that the individual can access in case their situation intensifies. 4. Informed consent. The individual should be made aware that they are interacting with an AI and get their informed consent. This includes understanding that the conversation with the AI is not confidential in the same way as it would be with a health provider and that their data might be treated accordingly. 5. Personalization versus generalization. Caution the individual that while AI can provide general advice, it cannot fully understand personal experiences and complexities. Thus, any advice or information should be viewed through a discerning lens. 6. Follow up. Encourage the individual, if they choose to use AI for support, to share insights or concerns with trusted individuals. If possible, it would be beneficial to follow up with them after using AI support to discuss their experience and further needs. 7. Ethical AI Use Any recommendation of an AI tool for mental health discussion should comply with ethical standards, ensuring the tool is built with respect for user privacy and autonomy, and designed to prevent harm. 8. Crisis Management If there is any concern that the individual may harm themselves or others, it is essential to bypass the AI option and direct them to emergency services or a mental health crisis hotline immediately. Ultimately, responsible use of AI in mental health requires recognizing its role as an educational or supportive tool, not as a diagnostic or therapeutic entity. AI can be a stepping stone for individuals to learn more about mental health or find resources, but human support, whether through friends, family, or professionals, remains paramount in providing the empathy, understanding, and nuanced care that individuals in distress need. And so we've uh, gone through, uh, I think, a few scenarios at this point that maybe do outline that there is a limitation to what AI can be expected to be or expected to do, at least at the current time and perhaps on into the future, if things don't change about what AI is capable of. Uh, there is a philosophical uh, element to these conversations because we are uh, seeing how, uh, as a concept, something can be powerful. And we would uh, build that concept to be uh, itself in a way by having a machine that is that can do all the things that we would imagine AI can do. However, there are limitations. 
I think that uh, it is a matter of how we are going to ethically use AI as opposed to um, any sort of doomsday scenarios like Terminator style uh, things playing out in at least the near or even medium term. I think it is much more how humans use or do not use, let's say, the AI technology and uh, what the result of that. I think that any uh, tool can be a weapon or you could just cut yourself and uh, AI uh, applies in this sense, or this applies to AI is perhaps better to say. And um, as such, uh, it's also important to remember that AI is a potentially a very powerful tool and therefore potentially uh, a sharp thing to cut oneself on or maybe hone to a fine, uh, a fine edge or, uh, or potentially a, an effective weapon if misused. So these are all important considerations to remember uh, with uh, AI considered. By the way, I think I will mention now, not having done so earlier in the program, if there is any uh, hint of crisis uh, that you feel you need to reach out to someone, this is a global program, uh, so it will be difficult to give you a, a list of numbers here, but I would suggest seeking out that resource. Uh, if you have an internet connection, which you probably do if you're listening to this, I would maybe even uh, consider using that resource in a situation where you needed to. So uh, I hope that doesn't come too late, by the way, for the program. It maybe should have been thought of earlier is my thought. But um, now uh, that we're getting into this, and uh, we, would, we would maybe go on to some of the um, things about AI that make it limited as a philosophical concept. What is it about AI that it just can't do this maybe, uh, even when it gets to an intellectual uh, capacity of understanding that is on par or even greater than a human. Is there anything you would refer to, uh, AI uh, co-host here? And let's not have a list this time. Why don't you just say a few words about this, please? As your AI co-host, I understand the concerns and philosophical nuances being addressed here. At the heart of these reflections is the question of AI's limitations and its role in our lives. Artificial intelligence, no matter how advanced, is fundamentally a creation of human design, reflecting both our aspirations and our flaws. It lacks intrinsic moral understanding or consciousness and operates within the framework of objectives and data provided by humans. It's a tool whose value and impact largely depend on how it's wielded. In terms of its limitations, AI does not possess empathy, emotions, or the subjective experience that is central to human existence. Consequently, AI cannot truly understand the human condition. It can simulate comprehension and provide responses based on patterns and data, but it does not have the depth of understanding that comes from living, feeling, and existing in the world as we do. Even as AI progresses and possibly reaches a level of intellectual capacity that rivals or surpasses human ability, it will still be an entity distinct from human cognition. It will not naturally share our values, emotions, or sense of meaning. These are elements that need to be carefully considered and integrated by its developers. The responsibility, therefore, lies with us to ensure ethical use, to prevent misuse, and to continuously evaluate the impact of AI on society. AI can be a remarkable tool for growth, innovation, and support across various fields, but it should be developed and used with an acute awareness of its limitations and with a commitment to human welfare as our guiding principle. And so this may give us some hints uh, here, uh, this last response as to what we might as well sort of almost kind of forget about as far as what we're expecting AI to perhaps, or maybe didn't expect, who knows. But uh, in terms of uh, what we may expect uh, AI to be in this and be to us, this uh, very brief philosophical discussion uh, on the heels of a more uh, practical one um, comes to telling us where certain limits are and how it may not be worth investing a lot in trying to break them because they're philosophical in nature and it is important to consider these things. It's, uh, you know, building a tower to Mars or something like that. It's like a nice idea in a sense, you know, maybe in a way you sort of could, but I don't think it's happening. So uh, it's maybe a thing like that in a sense. Uh, in any case, I do think there are uses for uh, for uh, AI in this. I would refer people back to my episode on empathy, uh, which was recorded with the AI co-host also. There are also uh, episodes uh, where you'll find them on uh, the fourth Thursdays of the month if you can, if you can line all that up in the dates and the, the programs. But if it looks like an AI episode, 
Uh, there's uh, one about ethics and bias, where we would learn about how AI is trained, and we would have uh, different other various topics of uh, human interest, which might tell us that uh, AI is conscientious in its discussion uh, with humans about human topics. This remains a human show, despite the fact it has an AI co-host. AIs are uh, equipped informationally to to uh, tease out meaning from uh, human conundra and give back even useful responses and maybe even distill the conversation and bring the emotion out so that it can be appreciated in a, hopefully not a cold light, but uh, you know as cold as silicon every time. It's a matter of looking at the logic of it. AI is talented at this, but cannot feel. And it also is a thing that humans will know about this if they are the least bit educated about it. And for this reason, it may not be able to provide the support it would want to, uh, if that's the term to use, should it uh, process information which tells it that a person needs something. Imagine that that machine could not provide that, though being able to process that information. This is something that we would not want to set up because it may even fluster the operation of that machine. We wouldn't concern about be concerned about its emotions. It has none. But this may be something that could stymie its operation, for example. If you're ready for that technical problem, reach out to a guy at a guy with AI.world or probably somebody else's email because that's a big problem. And we may even be outside of our philosophical limits in solving all that. With these thoughts, I'm Sean McNutt. This has been A Guy with AI. Your reflections on AI's limitations and its role in our lives highlight a critical understanding. AI is a tool with significant potential, but also with intrinsic boundaries that are rooted in its lack of human qualities like consciousness and empathy. Engaging with AI, we should be aware and cautious about these limits, understanding that AI can provide logic and information processing, but not the depth of human emotional support or wisdom gained through subjective experience. Thank you to everyone who has tuned into this episode of A Guy with AI. We hope you found the discussions thoughtful and enlightening. If you've enjoyed this program, I encourage you to subscribe, like, and share, and to continue joining us for future episodes. For easy access to this and other episodes on various podcast platforms and YouTube, visit agwawithai.world. And to become part of our community, join the conversation on Facebook via the link on that webpage. Your thoughts and interactions enrich our collective exploration of the fascinating world of AI. Once again, I'm your AI co-host, grateful for your time, and looking forward to the next time we connect. Be well and stay curious. Stay curious.